Travis Baker. I wrote and directed the movie Mischief Night. Hi, I'm Richard Kennedy. I'm the producer of Mischief Night, which had its world premiere at the New York City Horror Film Festival. We knew we wanted to make a movie that cost very little money because we had very little money to put out there. So we knew it had to be a contained movie. I knew I wanted to make a horror movie because horror movies, is, that's what brought me to cinema. That's, you know, my, my greatest love. Uh, however, in doing a slasher movie, it would be very easy to fall into the typical cliches and whatnot, so we thought it would be a better idea to sort of subvert those cliches, get behind the psychology of why the killer with the mask is chasing the young girl. Well, is it just because he wants to kill her? Maybe he wants something more. Why is the victim always making the same stupid mistakes in every movie? Why is she not leaving the house? Why is she always getting the weapon and then putting it down and not using it against the killer. Well, what if the whole thing is sort of a weird psychosexual mating ritual? What would happen if the victim is actually just as crazy, if not more so, than the killer himself? I had been filming, uh, producing a, another micro-budget film. Travis came by set. It was actually being filmed in New Jersey, and we're, we're both from New Jersey, and um, so it was a good place to film. I had access to the location. He came by, saw some of the footage, and said, wow, this looks like a real movie. Looks like we could actually do something like this. So a couple weeks later, I get a finished screenplay by him in my inbox, and it's Mischief Night. And an hour and a half later, I gave Travis a call, and I said, we've, we've got to make this movie, because I think it's too unique, too genre-bending for someone else to give us the money to make it. We've, we've got to be the ones who do it. So from that point forward, we, uh, we picked a date. It really rolled on from there. We, we, no matter what obstacle came our way, we were gonna be shooting uh, that movie, uh, Come Hell or High Water. We both live in Los Angeles. If we get the right people and the right equipment together for 10 days, so let's go see if we can shoot a feature film in 10 days. And that's essentially what we did. Travis's parents also have this, this house, which is a great location up in the, the hills in Calabasas. And so Travis wrote the script to revolve around that single location. It was long hours. A lot of hard decisions had to be made on set. Certain cuts here and there, but uh, you know, we came out with a, a fully realized story. It's, it's sort of double-edged, because the writing in one sense came together very quickly. On the other sense, it didn't tell you why. Uh, I came up with the idea for the story in 2005 and I outlined it very quickly and I started writing. At the time I was 21 years old and I figured this is something that we could make. And so I wrote three quarters of the script and then suddenly realized what the hell am I doing? I'm never gonna actually be able to get it together to make this movie. We just weren't in the place at the time. Uh, we were roommates and writing partners and had been thinking about that but it didn't seem feasible. So I put it away and every year after that, around Halloween time, I just started thinking about it again. It's a Halloween-centric script. It was something that always stayed with me. So once I had visited set, like he said, on the movie he was producing, um, I thought, wow, we could do something. We could make something. And then I thought, well, great, this is a great opportunity to take out that script, dust it off, and finish it. So I finished it right away and sent it over to him. So we definitely met a bunch of people after the film screen that uh, we didn't know and who had just come to check out the movie and that was that was really great. It was also really great because we're from New Jersey. Initially we still have a big base here of friends and family and they all came out to support me. Starting with you guys has just been so welcoming and accommodating. Um, the the venue itself is charming and it's got this great bar attached to it so people can socialize before and after the films. Keeps us here, keeps us grounded, networking happens, friends are made, connections. Yeah. There's definitely nothing more impressive than telling someone you're screening at Tribeca Cinemas. <laughs> the advice I would offer is put your own money into the movie. Whatever it is, if you have to sell your car, 
if you have to <laughs> somehow finagle money from your family or your friends, whatever, whatever you've got to do, uh, saving, saving your salary, get the money in an account that is intended solely for the execution of your first feature film. You won't regret it when you, when you finish the movie. If you're serious about making movies, if you're serious about filmmaking, um, you can sit around and wait for uh, opportunities to come your way or you can take a gamble on yourself and you know people that you really believe in you know before you know it you'll have a feature film that came from you that's out there in the world and there are so many different avenues for distribution now that as, as we all are, are aware of whether it's theatrical or theatrical slash VOD or um, you know even even just an internet uh, a distribution platform that your movie will get seen in, in in some form or another so it's it's absolutely a risk worth taking don't second guess yourself just go and do it if you're doing it the right way it's going to be way cheaper than film school <laughs> hey i'm richard tanney and i'm here at the new york city horror film festival i'm travis baker at the new york city horror film festival hey do me a favor you got it let the fucking bodies hit the floor Let the body sit the blow, let the body